Hello my dexterous friend, I'm that same gnome that you may know, and I welcome you to the next episode of the Bearded Engineers show. And the sponsor of this episode is PCB Way, a place where you can make your PCB the easy way, or even order to design it. The price starts from $5 for 10 pieces. PCB Way has also CNC machining and 3D printing services. Check it out. I think many of us, to make holes in PCBs, use drill benches, just like this one. And it's really important to be able to adjust the speed. I once promised you to talk about such controllers. Now it's time. Adjusting your RPMs, in fact, means regulating the current by controlling the voltage. Of course, we can go the old proven way and build a linear regulator. But the future has already come. No need to convert excess voltage into heat. A much more efficient solution just literally screams at us. Here's the basis of our future device. A cheap step-down converter. First, let's figure out how a switching step-down converter works. Let's look at the simplified schematics. We have a valve element, a diode and an inductor. Capacitors C1 and C2 act as filters. Let's apply high potential to the valve and thereby connect the circuit to the power source. So, at the beginning, the energy will be spent to create a magnetic field in the inductor. And therefore, the output voltage will be rising gradually. The current in this phase will flow this way. When the valve is closed and the circuit is disconnected from the source, some amount of energy will be stored in the inductor and a self-induction will appear. So, the diode will open and the current will flow in that way. As a result, the voltage at the output will not drop instantly. Let's apply some pulses to the valve, so it will be opening and closing sequentially. As a result, the output voltage will reach a certain threshold. It can be calculated as the multiplication of input voltage, pulse duration and a frequency. By changing the duty cycle of the control pulses, we can control the output voltage, and negative feedback will provide its stabilization. Simple and reliable, and this is what we call pulse width modulation. All those functions are usually performed by PWM or pulse width modulation controllers, which already have on board a powerful valve, a pulse generator and a comparator to provide feedback. Please welcome a PWM controller LM2596. The majority of market solutions are based on it. Application schematics are as easy as it can be. It's the same inductor and in diode. The feedback depth is adjusted by a potentiometer. In fact, this circuit already allows you to control the voltage in manual mode. This is already half the battle. The question is how to measure the load in the motor. There's a trick old as beard. A very small value resistor is connected in series with the load, the motor in our case. With increasing load on the motor, the current increases. And according to Ohm's law, the voltage drop on the resistor increases as well. However, the voltage drop will be tiny, around a few hundreds of millivolts. And increasing the resistance in order to shift this range doesn't play a trick, since too much power will be dissipated in it and the total current will decrease. Next thing, we need an operational amplifier. It will solve the problem of low voltage and provide the sensitivity adjustment. Voltage from the current sensor is applied to the non-inverted input. A reference voltage is applied to the inverted input. We need the feedback resistor to limit the gain. The operational amplifier reacts only to the potential difference between its inputs. Therefore, if the voltage at the non-inverting input reaches a certain level relative to the reference voltage, the potential at the output will increase. The output can be connected to a voltage regulator, and the threshold can be controlled by adjusting the reference voltage. As a result of my research, this schematic was born. The regulator is assembled on LM2596. At the input we have a rectifier, which receives voltage from the transformer. The motor is connected to the contacts X1 and X2. 
Switch 1 toggles the operating modes. In manual mode, the voltage is controlled by R9 potentiometer. In automatic mode, PWM feedback is switched through R10 resistance and trimmer R11. Operational amplifier LM358 is used. The reference voltage source is assembled on the TL431 stabilizer. R8 acts as the current sensor. Trimmer R6 sets the sensitivity threshold in automatic mode. The output does not go directly to the PWM feedback. That would be too simple and not very reliable. It goes to an optocoupler. The optocoupler is connected in such a way. When the potential at the operational amplifier is low, current flows through the LED, since it's a node is connected to the power source. The transistor at this moment is open and it shorts the trimmer R11. But when the operational amplifier is triggered, the potentials at the anode and the cathode are aligned. The transistor closes and the feedback depth of the pulse width modulator is reduced by the value of resistance R11. This trimmer regulates the voltage and RPMs when load is present. The optocoupler is protected from overvoltage by a Zener diode. Additionally, there is an output for the backlight based on the linear regulator LM317. Why linear? Because the backlight current is funny low. This schematic is power efficient at first and reliable at second. Yet we still need to find a suitable case, and it was successfully found in China. I've also added a voltmeter and an ampere meter to improve ergonomics and up the exterior. And while all this stuff was in transit, I had some time to test and debug the circuit on the protoboard and then get to the PCB itself. We have already talked about how to etch a PCB, so we will not dwell on that. The link to the video will be provided. We do everything in the proper way with a film mask. We already talked about the mask too. Meantime, while the board is being etched, let's open the SMD container. And yes, SMD. Why do extra holes? Let's place all the components on the print in order to not miss anything out. I'll begin with soldering the PWM controller. It has the most massive soldering pad. And well, let's get started.
And right here, I had gotten strong desire to put markings on the case, and since any paint tends to wear off, it should be engraved. Don't worry, I'll explain everything. First of all, let's apply photoresist to the clean surface and laminate it. Everything is pretty much the same as with the board. And that's the salt. I mean it, the ordinary table salt. We prepare a saturated solution of sodium chloride, the electrolyte in fact. A steel wire will act as the cathode, and the workpiece itself will be the anode. Next, applying the voltage. The higher current will speed up the reaction, but make sure that the workpiece is not overheating. And here we suddenly find the proper use for a one component black mask. It can be put to a better use after all. Everything gets fixed with an ultraviolet lamp. It will hold on better than any paint.
And that's all folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really like my content, consider supporting the project on Patreon. See you next time.